So I just got done watching the 1989 Royal Rumble event. Here's what I have to say. It's better. It's a lot better than the show we had prior. Um, yeah, the show is all around better. I didn't have to give a match one star. <laughs> I mean, pretty halfway decent show with a pretty halfway good rumble. And now, I'm going to review it for you guys. So, what we first had, up first, was a... Oh, first off, Gorilla Monsoon and Jesse Ventura on commentary for this event. And we start off with a two out of three falls trios match, six-man tag. Pitting um, the Hart Foundation and Jim Duggan versus Dino Bravo and the fabulous Rujos. That's our opener. It was actually a pretty decent opener. It went 15 minutes. It was wasn't that bad. 18 minutes. I'm sorry. Wasn't that bad. Uh, the Hart Foundation and Duggan pick up the win, two to one. WWE still into their random ass two out of three falls matches. And it, I gave it three stars because it was partway entertaining. You had some entertaining moments, some great tag psychology. You have your tag cheating. You got all that. So, yeah, I'll give it three stars. Not really a whole lot happened besides the, the one fall the Hart Foundation lost. Bret Hart was the one that took the pin. But, yeah... Good tag psychology, good tag cheating, great. What's next? So up next on the show, we showed superstars getting their numbers. And when Ted DiBiase, Million Dollar Man, got his number, he brought Slick in, the manager of the Twin Towers, who were also going to be in the Rumble later that night, at, which were Big Boss Man and uh, Akeem. He brought them in, and he brought Slick in, and then basically bought out one of the numbers of one of the Twin Towers. Meaning, whatever number one of the Twin Towers got was DiBiase's number. Was his original number, because DiBiase ended up coming out at 30. Next, we had the WWF Women's Championship. Now obviously it didn't go 15 minutes like the one at the previous event, but it was a it was a six minute match because it was a one on one and it wasn't two out of three falls. But before the match, Sensational Sherry was out there to challenge whoever won the match to a future championship match. Now it was Rock and Robin who was the champion versus Judy Martin who was the challenger. Judy Martin was. All right, in this match, but we all knew she was going to lose because it was Rock and Robin she was facing. Judy Martin was at the last event. It was Rock and Robin who she was facing, and she usually got the pushes. And Judy Martin ended up getting pinned because um, Rock and Robin got faked her out with the springboard. Anyway, it was a fine match. It it wasn't that bad. It wasn't a bad match. It's just I couldn't give it a rate, a star rating, because it was under f ten minutes. That's the thing with my star ratings is that if a match does not go like ten minute, anything over ten minutes, I can't rate it. Some people say, "Oh, you can rate it if it's over five. In my opinion, that's kind of too honorable. So I do ten minutes. If a match is ten minutes long, I'll give it a star rating. If it isn't, because I like longer matches. So, I really enjoy longer matches, but I do appreciate short matches like this. 
Then we had, um, it was a fine match. Since, oh, so, Sensational Sherry was on commentary throughout the match, by the way. The Twin Towers and Slick had a little interview. And afterwards, we had the super pose down between Rick Rude and the Ultimate Warrior, which was basically a skip the thing moment, but I had to watch the whole thing. It was pretty boring and took forever, longer than it needed to be. And the fans voted that Warrior won. <laughs> uh, Rick Rude, why are they doing you in the WWF, bud? Then the next match was... Oh, by the way, this is another four-match card. Except the Rumble is longer because this time they got 30 men. Because the last Rumble they had 20 and it only went 30 minutes. This time it went over an hour because they had 30. Next up, we got the King of the Ring crown and cape on the line as Haku. As Haku defends against... Um... Harley Race, and um, who is known as King Harley Race. However, Harley Race thinks he had his ground stolen, so he's still calling himself King Harley Race. Even though Haku is the one with the throne and cape. Anyway, it was, it was uh, also a fine match. It went under 10 minutes, so I couldn't rate it. It was only 9 minutes. If it went like a minute longer, I could have rated it like, I want to say... 2.75 it was pretty boring action really but it was, it was fine for a 9 minute match it was fine then afterward and Haku picked up the win now he was dubbed King Haku and then they had interviews with the competitors who will be in the Rumble and then we get to the Rumble match where Axe and Smash both members of Demolition started the match and decided to attack each other, not wait. And had they waited, they probably could have gotten Andre out faster because Andre was next. Uh, this is also the Rumble known where Andre had to eliminate himself because Damien got in the ring. If you don't know who Damien is, it's Jake's, Jake Roberts' snake. That's the name of the snake that Jake Roberts carries around. Jake threw Damien in the ring and J Andre eliminated himself. The Iron Man competitor in the match, I want to say, was... Either Mr. Perfect or Greg Valentine. I think Mr. Perfect was the Iron Man competitor in this. I think it was him. I want to say Perfect was the Iron Man competitor. Mr. Perfect came in at four. For those of you wondering. And lasted all the way up till number 18. Who was Hulk Hogan. And... Then we had, uh, oh, the moment where uh, Hogan eliminated Savage and everything. This was during the Mega Powers storyline where they're just about to implode because they're leading up to Mania 5, which would be the Mega Powers imploding. So obviously you had tensions brewing in between them because Hogan got Savage out and then Hogan got eliminated. And then like a sore loser had to help eliminate another guy even after he was eliminated, eliminating Big Boss Man. Sore loser Hulk. You got that down. Hogan got like seven eliminations. Shawn Michaels lasted pretty w a good while. It was Shawn's first rumble. Then you had a uh, big John Stud. Winning in an hour, five minutes, ten seconds, last eliminating, number 30, Ted DiBiase. And if you want to know where Big John Studd entered, he entered number 27, which would be called the lucky number in Royal Rumble matches since most people win from the 27th spot. Let me remind you that that hasn't happened in a while. When was the last time that happened? Who... When was the last time someone won from the 27 position? I'm about to Google that shit right now. Royal Rumble. 
I want to know who was the last person to win from the 20... Seventh spot. It was Austin in two thousand one, and since then, since then. Only three people, no, four people have done it. Yeah, four out of 36 Royal Rumbles. We're about to have 37, 38 coming um, next year in 2023. Anyway, that was my, the Rumble was pretty good. I gave it, I'd give it 3.5 stars. 0.5 stars more than the first Royal Rumble match. It was a lot more fun because it had 30 men. It was a lot longer because it had 30 men. But it was enjoyable for all the key moments. And now, ladies and gentlemen, that is my review on the 1990, 1989 Royal Rumble, Royal Rumble event. I give the show as overall grade a 65. 65% out of um 65% out of 100 because the match quality was a little bit better, a lot less two out of three falls matches and none of the matches ended by DQ. So with the wrestler tapping all the way through the match only to win via DQ. Yeah. Ricky Steamboat record. Anyway, yeah, the show is only a 65 because, let's face it, some matches are short, which I'm pretty sure we're all, we all like a little long match, long grueling, that we've come to expect in the modern day. So, yeah. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.